So our topic today is new technology that will drive change in FNB operations. It's a very crucial part of the hotel trade because now, I mean, we had a recent discussion where we were saying that a lot of hotels, it's almost become 50-50, FNB and rooms. And sometimes it's even more than 50-50. So let's begin with uh, Prashant, who is the hotel manager and uh, of a very crucial hotel, which is well known for its FNB. I mean, all of you are from places well known for F and B. So let's begin with you. Yeah. So, you know, when you look at technology in today's day and age, uh, you know, people, in my opinion, there are these five, six pegs about technology which uh, will drive the food and beverage business and going in the future. Uh, to start off with, we're all very well aware of how social media has become, as a part of technology, has changed already the way we do uh, conduct ourselves in food and beverage, along with the applications which are there in the market, uh, but. You know, these two are the most widely spoken things currently as we uh, talk about uh, technology, but there are more aspects in my opinion which would going, you know, three years to five years in the future, which will change the way we look at food and beverage, uh, namely, you know, concentration on big data of how the consumer trends will shape up in food and beverage, wearable technologies. Today, every technology that you have which is wearable, like a watch, can measure the amount of calories that you eat, about how your food habits are. Somewhere down the line, I have a feeling that that will majorly impact the way food and beverage business is done. You could also look at uh, cashless payments, which will become a big way after three to five years, where people will stop using credit cards and will start using mobile technology. Crowdfunding and crowdsourcing. These days, we are looking at acquisitions of restaurant chains in uh, food and beverage where major players are coming in, but soon, Crowdsourcing, crowdfunding will become the big way of how food and beverage is run. So in my op opinion, these are the five, six trends of the future yeah. which will really shape the way food and beverage uh, will be driven as far as technology and uh, tech space is concerned in the next three to five years. And these will become the drivers. Now, one of the biggest issues with F&B, at least from, I mean, I know there's no chefs here, but from the kitchen point of view is the service chain in our country. Obviously, you, everyone knows that. What about technology there? That is an area which really needs technology, that needs smoothening out, that needs simplification, that needs predictability, which is not there. How do you see that going forward? I mean, uh, Rohit, can you talk about that? Or can you talk about from the point of view of, actually, you should talk about more from the reservation side and what you are dealing with. We'll get to, Samir, uh, let's get to that, because you've so, been doing yeah. a lot of work in this area. So on the, you know, you're talking about the back end and in the food processing and logistics. Uh, so I think technology has started to see a play there. So the larger logistic players have uh, a cold chain. They have a technology by which you can monitor temperatures as you transport food across, uh, especially perishable food across the country. Uh, there is where in warehousing, but you're right, there's a large opportunity still. Uh, there's still a huge food wastage. There's still, I think, not adequate uh, suppliers of, I'd say, most categories of uh, food items. Yeah. There's still a large, in my view, especially in the hotel space, an over-dependence on imported food items. Mm -hmm. And all F&B managers here's gross margins would have got impacted over the last year and a half, two years with, uh, you know, dollar depreciation, you know, rupee depreciation. So there's, you know, I think there's a lot to be done. I think technology uh, is very important in terms of controlling inventory in a kitchen. I think in controlling food costs, there's a lot of ways that you can uh, use technology. Uh, and there are, you know, I'd say the smarter point of sale systems have a very strong inventory management program. Uh, having a strong inventory management program can actually cut a couple of points off your food cost very easily. So I think there's a lot of opportunity at the back end. And it's still, I think it's still early. There's a lot more which can be done with technology in the kitchen per se, in terms of perishable perishability, uh, evaluating uh, whether you should buy something quarterly, annually, uh, the yeah. seasonality in terms of commodities, you know, lots of aspects. Rohit, you are now dealing with an area of reservations for people to come into restaurants. Do you see that technology developing to an extent where you can then, you know, to an extent predict what people eat so that, you know, that's a far side thing, but I mean, eventually, would you be able to develop it in that way? Or do you think it will develop in a different kind of so I'll start with asking everybody in the room a question. How many of you still use travel agents to book your tickets? Sorish. Still? Sorish. Okay, I would see it's less than 10% of the total 
or less than 5% of the total population of the room. And that's where uh, we come in at Easy Diner with uh, online restaurant reservation. And, and the reason why uh, this is a big breakthrough in the world of food and beverage is because everybody is nowadays with their smartphones. Everybody is doing everything with their smartphones, which is either you know checking out a new website or uh, booking a movie ticket or booking booking a airline ticket, booking hotels, everything is moving to online, and that's where restaurant reservations. Why would that be lagging behind? And that's where we are pushing and making it simpler and easier, frictionless completely for people to make reservations as well in restaurants because restaurants need to be filled up. I mean, we have a huge hyperlocal market of everybody sending everybody everything at home for everyone. You know, people concentrating on delivery, a lot of delivery startups, people are sending food at home and not wanting people come to the restaurants. And, you know, me being a passionate hotelier, we've be, I've been in the industry for quite some time, running hotels and running restaurants. Um, I would rather have restaurants filled up, or we at Easy China would rather have restaurants filled up than um, have people take away food and sit at home and eat. It's obviously a great uh, experience, not only dining with your friends, with your family, with uh, uh, with just your office colleagues as well. Even a drink at the end of the day in a in a bar or restaurant makes all that more difference than going home and having a drink alone. Yeah? Wouldn't you agree, all of you? Dining out is much nicer, has got more experiences than just uh, just dining at home. I mean, obviously, there's the family side of it, but then still, dining out is always nicer. So answering your question, um, sir, with regards to uh, essentially a lot to do with data. So when people book online, uh, they make reservations at various restaurants. So we get to know where they eat, what are the dining preferences of a wide range of population, be it geographically mapped to Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore, or even break it down within Delhi, how many in Gurgaon, how many people like to eat what in Gurgaon, what kind of cuisine, what uh, would they like to you know, experiment with. If there's a new restaurant which is open, what is the traction that we see, how many people want to go to that restaurant? Yes, so going forward in terms of uh, a lot of data, in terms of uh, information gathering for uh, fellow colleagues in, in various hotels and restaurants, it'll be a great platform for, for, for people like us to kind of uh, be able to feed them whatever they need. For example, if you if you ask me that, okay, fine, Rohit, so in Delhi NCR, in Sector 29, uh, Gurgaon, or maybe Delhi NCR, in Saket, which is the hottest selling restaurants, which means that that's the kind of cuisine that people uh, prefer. Or people staying in a particular area, what kind of cuisine would they prefer? That's the kind of data which I can give you, which we can I actually generate and give you. And that's the space which will obviously go hand in hand with the... Um, with the increased food and beverage outlets, with restaurants, uh, and also with you know ease of uh, getting to know about a restaurant or getting to know about a cuisine, whether you like to go and how you can book, and making it, like I said, completely uh, frictionless. So you want to go somewhere, you book, and, you, and you're there, but also the other side, which is data management, with uh, and sharing the same across the industry with all my colleagues is something that we are also, you know, uh, getting into and sharing very openly with everyone. Nitesh, I think you were saying something very interesting about Microsoft just before the session, right? Yeah. So, thank you, but <clears throat> I'd just like to build on to what okay. Rohit is saying and as a strong uh, F&B guy, I mean, in f &B for the last 10 years before I started running hotels, I think what Easy Diner has really helped us doing is, uh, help us increase our marketing reach. Because uh, as a hotelier, there's only X amount that one can do. So I, I very fondly remember of this example. We ran a very successful wine by glass program, yeah. uh, and two months back we were selling 50 labels of glass at 250 uh, a glass. So pretty much buying it, buying a bottle and selling it at cost. But the reach which these guys gave us was all across Cyber Hub. We had 250 holdings, and that's something which I as a hotel could really not do given my my marketing spend. So uh, they do a fantastic job. At the same time, I also would like to caution, you know, because there's so many of these startups available and um, it's quite unfortunate that the first one which started the whole thing, and I was their biggest ambassador in Bombay at, at Trident Bandakula with all the restaurants, but not too long ago we discovered that they were actually cloaking numbers. So there is a little bit of caution in this field also that while these guys operate differently, but a lot of the places in the market, they end up cloaking numbers and make it look all good where the fact is very different from what it is. 
So having said that, I think uh, in the reservation space, like you pointed out, uh, apps like EasyDiner really help us in increasing our reach. And the best part is that you can end up booking a table in less than two steps because, you know, IBM ran this study. Anything which takes more than five seconds as a booking decision is a wrong decision. Nobody's going to even do it. So all lengthy reservation forms and your name and email address and wife's name and birthday and all that, nobody even has the time. So five seconds or less is something which they, I think, done it really well, which is helping us also in driving numbers. But um, coming back to my technology, so technology excites me. You know, technology really excites me. Uh, the prospect of using them in hotels is, is absolutely great. So the first bit of technology which we actually embraced many years ago was a glitch program by Triton, wherein everything which goes wrong in a hotel, we kind of document this and we I live by the glitch program. So because of that, the way we use it, our efficiency that have actually increased by 18% year on year. We simply don't make the same mistake twice and that's what it documents and learns it. But going forward, I think Microsoft is doing a lot of great work. So I must go this example of Amway's new store in Bangalore. I think it's the first digital store, and the whole thing is all done by Microsoft Surface devices and touchpads and all of that. You can watch it, you can see what you like, you can put it to a basket and then kind of uh, uh, make your purchase on the spot. So restaurants, I think, have to learn a lot from retail. Because if you look at Marks and & Spencer's and HMS and all of those brands globally, they're doing lots with beacon technology. And that's something which is absolutely brilliant. So imagine if you kind of walk past a restaurant and the restaurant knows your preferences, so the beacon can actually push uh, preferences on your phone. So we know for a fact like Bikramji loves a great glass of wine. So when you're passing down a corridor, imagine a great glass of Bordeaux comes on your phone and thereby tempting you to make your purchase. And that's where technology can really enable us. But at the same time, uh, I'm also cautious because uh, India being what it is and service, elements of service are very strong in our blood. And I think we beat most countries, European, etc., cetera, in, in service delivery because it comes really from the heart. So while I want technology to enable my processes, I will never use technology to replace my processes. And that's something which you're very clear about because that in a luxury five-star ambience, like we're the number one on TripAdvisor for years in a row, because service makes that huge different for us. So I really wanted to enable my boys in doing things better. So I'll give an example. Many years ago when Micros came out with a small little tab, so you can punch your orders on the phone. And remember, we tried it in Gurgaon. It didn't work because the scrolling down takes too much time. So one has to be like really, really careful with what technology you can use. So with Surface and Microsoft, we're actually working on some concierge devices, uh, enabled to use some devices on which you can scroll and give pictures to guests and enable them to make decisions better. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Nitin, your part of uh, the whole picture is a very crucial part, procurement. It's uh, much abused, but it's also very crucial. How do you think technology has helped? Has it helped? Does it, is it more needed now, especially in the F&B space for procurement? Uh, when I take care of the procurement, uh, for me, it's been 22 years in different hotels. And I've realized that uh, this entire industry is evolving. From the day when I started in uh, Taj Mahal, there we, we used to make the purchase orders manually. The chefs would come with manual requisitions. Uh, nowadays, that's not the case. We not just get the requisitions in system, but we also place the orders through system. There's uh, the absolute approval also is done through system. So there's no involvement in terms of signing. There's no involvement in terms of approvals. So everything is absolutely technologically uh, taken care. So as far as FNV is concerned, uh, I, I'm sorry, Samir, I, uh, I'm sorry, I disagree with you, wherein a, a minute ago when you mentioned that uh, most of us, we buy mostly international products. But uh, me being in procurement, uh, it's a mandate now. Uh, most of the owners want to substitute. Most of the owners want to ensure that uh, wherever possible, we use local products. So we started going backwards. So uh, talking to farmers, uh, talking to consolidators, in fact, uh, talking to people who can develop and create products here. So there we have used, one, uh, the human aspect in terms of vendor development. Second, allowing them to use the technology to utilize uh, most of it. So the yield management is improved in terms of uh, just in time. So if the uh, product is harvested in the evening, it ensures that it is delivered to us as soon as possible. Uh, I work in Mumbai and uh, we are very close to Pune and Nashik, uh, to that matter, uh, Gujarat region. So 
what we do is we place the orders in the evening and ensure that the deliveries are delivered first, first thing in the morning. So they harvest in the night and the deliveries come in the morning and there is very minimal amount of wastage. So there we have utilized, I would say, so-called technology uh, to that matter, avoiding that uh, cold chain per se. So people do not want to invest in uh, expensive refrigerated vans because they're still farmers. They're still at that level wherein they do not have 10 lakhs, 15 lakhs to invest on the vehicle. So, but then they ensure that sufficient amount is harvested and delivered to us. Uh, so as far as the FNB is concerned, one, we ensure uh, we give what is requested for. We ask them to specify products. So this, when the specifications are clear, it's easy for us to uh, make the annual contracts, negotiate, and ensure that the deliveries are done as and when they need. As far as certain brands are concerned, if they are international, they are international. We cannot replace them because a hotel is known for uh, a repute of its when it gets attached to a reputed brand. So certain uh, wines, uh, if they come from Bordeaux, you might as well have it. If you have a champagne, then you might as well have it. You might replace it with some sparkling wine based out of uh, any other country, but that's not going to be your selling point. So it's important that uh, the buyer understands what the user needs, and he needs to first use the technology to ensure that he delivers what is requested for. Dinesh, your hotel is choco block when it comes to F and B. Thank you so much. <laughs> How was lunch? That was his. It was his purview. I mean, a chef from Mons probably. Yes. But it was. Uh, how was it? <laughs> They're all silent. They're, still, <laughs> they're getting over the, the stu food stupor. Yes. Tell me something. How has technology helped you? And where do you think there is need for more technology? That's a question that everyone should ask. Where is the need? Because everyone reaches a level where, you know, you work at such a manic level in F&B. There's sometimes very little time to sit back and think, okay, we need to do this. We need to do this. You're doing firefighting. Like Nitin said, yes, it's an ideal situation. You will say, get me five of these and four of these. But if it doesn't happen, what do you do? That is the big thing. So where do you think is the need? See, I would uh, really actually call, uh, call it as, as I said that, okay, it's uh, over the years, the, the technology has transformed uh, food and beverage as such, uh, 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 really drastically moved on. Okay, as Nidin said that from whatever uh, the purchasing point of view to anything. Uh, I would rather say that technology has helped us in looking uh, internally as well as externally. Okay, internally when I say this, this has helped us in empowering and in engaging our team to do their job well. Okay, because uh, in terms of uh, the social communication which everybody receives in time, it's not that okay, if somebody gives a comment on the social media or if somebody gives, we, we have a lot of internal way of getting feedbacks from the guest who checks out. As soon as he comments, comments onto it once he checks out, you immediately get a, get a, get a feedback within, uh, say, half an hour of his, he commenting onto it. So the reaction time when it comes up to uh, getting back to the guest has become much faster. So this has helped us in, uh, in, uh, 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 in, uh, in trainings because uh, this is an immediate tool which everybody receives in time. So you, had to, uh, you, you can make a training need analysis well in time rather than wasting time onto it. Okay, so I would rather say that this has helped in, uh, in uh, nurturing the new team, which we could never, never, never use that when we were young or when we were just started, uh, started the job. So it's basically helped us in creating a uh, much faster approach. And when I say externally, um, in uh, years back, I think uh, we all used to look at ourselves, like within the hotel, what can you do to improve uh, the experience? Now it's, uh, it's a time wherein... Uh, our focus is equally important to become looking external also. Because you have so much of tools, you have so many people who is actually competing with us who is not actually a hoteliers. Okay, there is, there is uh, Zamato as actually yesterday, they, they had a big ad in the paper saying that uh, choose your restaurant, you can get your food delivered in, uh, in half an hour time or one hour time or whatever it is. So it's, it's just not an internal competition, it's an external competition too, which don't cook food. Okay, so we need to actually create an experience where, um, where you can, uh, I would say that where you, you, you can go to the computer and click buy. Okay, we, uh, that experience is, they are receiving it at home. Yeah. 
So you need to, as a restaurant or as a food and beverage operational, you need to create something which you cannot click buy in your computer. So the experience what we need to create is really, really unique experience. They need to feel like coming back. They need to feel that it's worth coming into the, into, into, into the restaurant and dining rather than sitting at home. So that, those, those are the, um, I would say that encouraging challenges which we have, which we should cope up as a new uh, food and beverage uh, operators. Add to that, you know, you asked uh, how can hotels use technology more where? So one aspect, and I'll be the devil's advocate here, I'm not a hotelier, I'm more a restauranter than a hotelier. Uh, so I think A, uh, you know, you, hotels should really use technology more to understand their consumer. I think hotels do a great job of understanding their room consumers. But if you ask me, I think hotels do a very average to below average job of yeah. understanding and knowing the F&B consumers especially if they're not in-house guests. So how many, when you get walk in the door, do you get recognized by name? No. Do you have reservation, you know, guest histories? Uh, so I think you can really use technology to harness, to know your consumer, to know what your consumer is talking about you on social media, uh, very important. Uh, and to know what your competition is, because your competition today is not just the other hotels. No. It's actually, largely to me, the independents. Mm -hmm. And even if you're ITC or yeah. your Trident or your the Leela, uh, well you, you can compete with each other, but in terms of wallet share, you're losing out to, you know, a Tonino or Olive and X and a Y, lower priced, but uh, I think there's a lot of... It's in the dirty word in F&B, standalone. Standalone, not a dirty <laughs> word. It's a, it's, a, it's a realistic word. So I think, you know, in terms of use of technology, I think using it to understand your consumer and therefore reach out to the consumer in a very and targeted manner. And when it comes very to technology, F&B is an area where it's so vast. I mean, let me give you a very simple example, one bit of technology, which has nothing to do with F&B, which has affected every single F&B outlet in India, is satellite TV and uh, MasterChef Australia, because people are now demanding and they're pushing you guys more. So how has that, you know, you're excelling even more. I mean, 10 years ago, you would have not been thinking of doing half the things or maybe 25% of the things you're doing now. Just this whole, say, this Nitin's I, thing I of going local. Add on to you, you know, uh, free sign restaurants, dirty words, stand down, not really. You know, in fact, I, for one, get inspired by what they do and they're doing some fantastic stuff. There's a place called the Egg Bar, which is open recently. Brilliant, out of the world. I mean, unique You concept. can be inspired by dirty words as well. Yeah, so of course, I mean, the things are doing better, but to answer your previous question about uh, where do you see F&B approaching technology, I think one big uh, area which is yet to be tapped into is the meetings and banqueting space. Mm. Uh, for us, uh, I mean, for all of us, I'm sure 40% or more must be banqueting revenues out of in food and beverage, maybe more for larger hotels just this. So uh, I'll tell you what's happening in the world. Globally, Cisco has come up with a huge engagement platform wherein, for example, the sensors all over this room and beacons, all, I love beacons for that, for that matter. And they are, Bikramjeet, on a real time, reading the facial expressions of all your participants sitting here and giving you instant feedback, whether they're engaged, whether they're disengaged. And basis that feedback, one can actually make changes. So we are actually talking to Cisco about implementing such a change with us. Also, we talk... Exactly, or, or, change, or change your speech altogether or make it more engaging for your consumer. At the same time, is about the furniture. I mean, we're used to seeing round tables and chairs, but it's changing. People want more designer, much more uh, furniture, which is good for the back, etc. So there is technology changes happening on that front. Uh, next, a very small change is the way we look at menus, for example. So when you, before we moving to iPads for the bar, we were spending close to, I don't know, close to upwards of three and a half lakh rupees in maintaining good quality paper menus and buying one paper better than the other. And this is handmade, oh, let's get this from China and let's get this from here. Where it's cheaper to buy five iPads and replace your entire but menus. In, in India, iPads with oily fingers that you don't get in the West. You know, oily fingers, you wipe it off. With you come to a five-star hotel, we'll wipe it for you. A free starting, I don't know whether that'll happen, but we'll wipe it for yeah. you. So th those are ways and means by of engaging uh, your guests all the bit more. Uh, it has to be enabler, and we all have to be positive in, 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 uh, in learning from it. But to handle your point about uh, how do we look at recognition, you see at the Obra Group, and this was a lovely initiative uh, done by our group president, Mr. Chopra, we were not really collecting uh, data points together. And the last seven months, we've now crossed close to 450,000 data points of users in food and beverage. And now we're actually segregating them by restaurant-wise, cuisine-wise, and therefore, 
I mean, each hotel has a target. We have a target of collecting more than 75 points. Collecting data points based on which restaurant they're dining in, and then we're segregating them into cuisine, and therefore specific uh, cuisine-based promotions are going to people across the globe. It's something as simple as that, and that's what big data is all about. We know, all just, know the word, just about implementing it to the core. Taking, a, uh, taking your discussion forward about recognizing guests, there is, uh, at ITC Hotels, we've got a technology which is RFID enabled. Most of our guests who are uh, subscribers of Club Culinaire or ITC uh, memberships have a card. As soon as you enter the hotel, there are RFID panels in the hotel which will uh, tell the person whether it's at the reception or whether you're crossing Bukhara or the coffee shop or you're going to the spa, wherever you're going within the hotel. You could be a non-resident, but we will have your photograph, your name, your preferences flash right at the entrance. So there is a great way of recognizing guests. And this is all technology enabled. And we've been doing this for about two years now, and we've had great success in ensuring that there is great personalization within the outlets. At the so same time, it has to be on price. You know, just outside is a beautiful, uh, and pardon my, there's a beautiful display outside of this mirror which changes colors and it becomes opaque. It's priced at 15,000 rupees a square foot. I mean, who's going to buy it? So at the same time... You know, well, they're those, hoping you are. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for those who want to bring in, it has to be the right price. So price, of course, will really yes. make a difference. And, and I think uh, one factor that we can all agree is that the human element is the most important element after the food in F and B. So that has to go hand in hand with technology, I guess. So, you know, on, on, the, on the human element, uh, again, technology can aid uh, improving the human experience, I mean, mm. the service experience. So whether you think, you know, depending on the type of restaurant, whether iPads, you know, would help and make a process faster in a fast moving restaurant or a fast moving coffee shop where you want quick, to, you know, table turnarounds, uh, again, technology can help. Uh, you're never going to, you, you, we're not going to set up ro you know, robot restaurants in a hurry in India for sure, uh, maybe in Japan. But, you know, I think people is always important. But again, helping the people. So, you know, what he's you know, talking about at the Maurya is a great thing. It's helping each hostess with an RI, you know, with a pop up, you know, uh, that so and so's walked in. So it's actually helping the people deliver a more personalized experience using technology. I think there's a, a lot of elements of technology which we can used to improve the service levels and do differentiated service uh, by giving them technology aids. Correct. I also feel instead of replacing the human element, let's train them better with the help of technology and uh, you make use of their abilities. So that's what one should do. What about technology in reducing wastage? And that's a huge in f and it's and especially banqueting. How is it helping banqueting, which is a big cash cow? in all the hotels? Yeah, there, there's a, not really technology, but there's a small little intelligence which the chefs have started using now, at least in Bombay. They do not cook in bulk. They cook small portions. So what happens is they cook maybe four or five portions and then they are ready. So the mezampla is ready behind, but nothing is cooked in bulk, so wastage but, is I mean, reduced. I, I remember when I did some programming with the Indian Army, I realized instead of bulk cooks, one cook cooks for eight people. So it's a kind of reflection of that because it's easier to manage that way. But how do you really tackle wastage? You know, to answer your question, uh, I've really not come across any technology which will help you, but I think what's really helping us reduce numbers is awareness. And that awareness is done by modern point-of-sale units. So earlier, I remember when I was an industrial trainee, you used to see the food cost report flash once a month. And then in the last 10 years, it's come down to once every one hour. And that's what the, the POS can actually help you with micros and all of that. So seeing the number flash in front of you, and that's what data is helping you analysis, analyze it much better. You can actually reduce wastage on a continuous effort. But like I was saying, if you read your function pr prospectus well, the chefs are well trained, there has to be a culture of reducing wastage. You know, no matter how much technology becomes that you install in hotels, if the culture is not there that we have to reduce wastage and therefore help out some other, somebody else, it can never happen. But of course, technology can help you in, uh, in selecting things right. So if your selection processes, if your uh, negotiation is right, you get the right amount of equipment or right amount of ingredients or food in the hotel. So I'd rather spend more time in the receiving yard, getting the right ingredients in, rather than uh, wasting them uh, two days later when the chef sees them, they listen, the orange is not right. So we've actually set up huge, it's a very manual thing, but huge receiving charts with the photograph of each item, what should they weigh, what should it look like, what should they smell, and we've actually trained our boys because the purchasing supervisor may not know the taste of salmon, right? We may not be able to uh, taste it. So our chefs have actually gone back and made elaborate manuals. It's a very uh, simple task to do, but has actually helped us in reducing wastage. See, also, just this point to make over here, not because anything related to waste management or anything, 
but uh, <clears throat> pardon me saying this my fellow colleagues have been in um, restaurants and hotels for the, for quite some time but uh, we 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 do a lot of inve innovations inventions in food and beverage with regards to technology so we have nice ipads for menus we have <clears throat> we have uh, different ways of uh, showcasing a particular dish or so on and so forth but uh, the basic problem that we all face and uh, whether we like to address it or not and was <clears throat> brought up with the standalone segment was how do we tell this to the world that you know this is what we have done this is what we have started this is what we've incorporated this is how we are uh, changing the world around you uh, that's i think a very big concern which we have and which we should be able to address with uh, platforms such as easy diner and in terms of telling out to people reaching out to people in terms of marketing i think that's where technology will also play a very important role for food and beverage so whether you know we we, it, we introduce something new you have something new on your menu there's something new which is uh, part of the uh, in, in the restaurant telling people that this is what we have so we we do we in, innovate everything keeping in mind the guest but if you don't get the guest then what's the point of innovating so that's what i'm trying to say so technology in terms of marketing in terms of telling people uh, it's like the ganesha theory that you have a you have a trunk and you shout out and say that here i am so please come and uh, utilize me and it, that's where uh, technology will also play a very major role that's what we feel and uh, hence it's a very growing market uh, if you, if you look at numbers and the way uh, you know marketing agencies or marketing platforms or reservation platforms like us which have grown so it's it's more with uh, people in uh, encompassing and embracing the fact that it's easy it's it's great to get into restaurants and restaurants are also pretty i guess i would love to say that they're happy that uh, they are able to reach out to the right people embracing technology various ways of 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 technology in fact um, we prashant spoke about social media about instagram about twitter about facebook um i was reading somewhere that chili spent close to about 750 uh 1000 uh, dollars just to get the shine on their buns so that they are attractive on photographs so yeah so so that's another way so they spent so much amount of money on getting their product out there by virtue of technology so you know that's where we kind of connected together with if they just use simple egg glaze it would be much cheaper <laughs> you don't require expensive technology to make buns look better Maybe but you know adding on to what well. that's the you were not working for chilies you would have taken 750 dollars adding on to what rohit is saying i think it's a reality we all have to wake up to i mean every day you see uh, mobile apps there is spoon joy there is tiny owl there is zomato there is easy diner there are about 10 more in the food space which have come up so which require us to be fleet footed earlier i remember we used to get emails on reservations and the restaurant manager take a day's time 24 hours was acceptable to revert now it's less than 10 minutes so it's all about responding fast responding quickly and therefore our systems need to be much more faster it's a reality like you're saying zomato's ad uh, on the on the paper i mean they're just being a bit too bullish but we have to match it or if not come together on the same platform you know another area where i think technology can come up is uh, on the sales and marketing front and that's where virtual reality devices can really kind of come and help like samsung has got something outside we're actually toying with it too but it's it's tough to make the 3d thing come alive but if you can actually project in uh, when you go for sales conferences or sales meetings and instead of just showing brochures show live visuals which come up and holograms it's so there's a whole like world going out banqueting spaces and yeah. things like that so you actually can yeah you can actually make a hologram out of a small phone and it comes alive and move around the pictures so that's something which we're already working on extensively I think uh, we're going to open up the panel for questions. Anyone asking questions? Sourish, lead the way. Come on. Everyone is still napping. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, Dinesh, uh, I think your team uh, and Ramon's team have put together a great lunch. And it's too it's good a lunch. <laughs> Even I had food coma. I mixed people up. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, well, um, you know, <clears throat> I I have this question. I think. Uh, you know between prashant and nitesh you can maybe address it you know um, like the apps like easy diner and all are coming up and they gaining a great uh, market what prevents hotels you know now a lot of hotels are getting reservations through online means you know like obera you can go to the website and does what prevents hotels from introducing apps Say obera introduces an app which allows you to make a reservation anywhere um, in the country you know uh, so 
Sorish, we we already working on two apps, one for the one for the Oprah brand and one for the Trident brand. They all in, under various stages of uh, development. But I'll tell you where EasyDana and how I use them without them even knowing that I'm using them. So my marketing spend, let's say for food and beverage for my hotel is about 15, 20 lakh rupees. And earlier it used to be a lot into print. Uh, but now that's moved, an 80% chunk has gone to the digital spare. Now while I understand what, uh, uh, what SEO is about, what search engine optimization is all about, I understand search engine marketing. I had to learn that just to hone my skills, but they know it better. And, I, and I'm... And I own it uh, on, on a much larger scale. But that's something which you all have to learn and understand as to how Google works. You know, it's, it's a wide saying that if $1 spent today in marketing on the net, 60 cents go to Google and the 40 cents goes to Facebook. So that's where these guys help us in optimizing our money. But having said that, now that we're getting the grip of the game, you'll see something action on our side happening very, very soon. But they've done a great job in optimizing words for us, optimizing Konomi or my Indian restaurant Saffron for us brilliantly. So in a combined effort, and so we actually look at them as partners who are doing that. So I actually look at EasyDiner as an extension of my marketing team. And given the response rate, you just tell them I want to optimize it in the following fashion, and there is done. So there is actually an advantageous situation for me to have partners like this. I agree. Even ITC, we are uh, working on an app where we you can you know, go online and start booking restaurants. So that is something which is work in progress and you will see that uh, coming up with us also in the near future. But I completely agree with the uh, you know, sites like Zomato, Easy Diner. They are partners now. They are the ones who will now showcase us in front of the entire world. And because of the large user base, it only makes more sense to not only do it yourself, but also do it along with them. And it, it is a win-win for both parties. So uh, counter to that, so yeah, I, I think hotels will do their apps and do their... But today, a lot of the consumers, especially the millennials, actually go straight to platforms. They're not going to look at a brand. They're not going to go search. So they a, a lot, and that's especially say for the millennial. Uh, Does that allow you to compare? compare yeah, yeah, absolutely. So millennials, especially millennials, uh, want to compare. So they'll go to you know Zomato, Easy Diner. They'll go to an app and say, okay, what's happening? You know, where, where's the best deal? Who's, who's offering what? And a lot of it is also value comparison happening across different segments. Brand loyalties. No, I'm not saying they're not brand loyalties, but they want to see the action, they want to see the option. So if you're a, yeah, absolutely, if you're, you know, you're a, you're a, I mean, if you've made a focused decision, I want to go to, you know, say, Dumpuk for dinner, yeah. right? You, you'll, you know, you'll probably go to the ITC Hotels app once so it's it up and It only makes more sense actually to partner with them and yeah, as well absolutely. as have your own thing. Yeah, you I could mean, do both. I mean, yeah. I think both That's are going to work in, yes. you know, tandem like they're saying. You got to do your own brand and you must partner with uh, kind of platforms. You, you retain because your loyalists onto your own yeah. platform and you engage with the others on the other common platforms. You so know, that much you get to more our people disappointment, back. one thing which kind of works really well is deals. And like you yeah. always saying, everybody loves deals. So in Dubai, there is a website called uh, Entertainer. And the reason why they're popular is because they give a flat 50%. So if you give a 50% and everybody comes onto it, or if you come to me and ask me for 50% discount, I'll say, listen, it can't happen. You know, I'll probably add values to it. So while uh, these guys don't discount too much, and that's another area uh, which is partnering with sites like this, is that you start affecting your bottom line. And hence, till such time that my app and it does not come in full power, I have to sleep with them. I've got to be partners with them. Also, to uh, say what you were uh, talking about, uh, brand loyalty. In the millennials, I do not think there's anything which is called brand loyalty because if you look at any phone of any millennial, they'll have five different apps for the same thing. For example, they'll have Snapdeal, they'll have Flipkart, and they'll have Mintra, and they'll have Jabong, so which is, again, e-commerce sites doing the same thing for you. But again, there's no brand loyalty, again, because they want to check what's, which is the best deal where, which is the best trade available where. The same goes for, uh, you know, communication. So you have WhatsApp and you have Hike. So you have both, both giving the same platform. But again, there's no uh, brand loyalty for that matter. Yeah, correct. I guess, but then if there isn't any more brand loyalty left as far as millennials are concerned, that's a bigger challenge for the industry to, you know, get them on board and stay, make them stay. Yes. One Do we have an usherer? So the front end, I'm loyal to a brand. Now what's happening, it's changing, I'm loyal to Flipkart, I'm loyal to Amazon, I'm loyal to Snapdeal. These are bigger brands today. So yes, uh, what is happening, you're becoming the back end. We are becoming a suppliers, which was earlier 
our suppliers. It's just a way to look at it. So yes, uh, if you call millenniums are not brand loyal. Yes, there's a loyalty towards the brand, but the needs have changed. No, no, I think the answer, so let me answer. I think what, and I do this. So if you're shopping for, say, uh, electronic gadget, right? You, if you're a smart online consumer, you will look for that same gadget across various platforms. You look at Flap, Flipkart, Amazon, Snapdeal, and depending on when you're buying uh, it, reasonable value item, you'll actually go. There's no loyalty. I don't know about others, but there is no... If it's 2000... I mean, I mean, it's with everything. If you go on yeah. to TripAdvisor and look at the hotels, yeah. there are four prices. You click on the cheapest. You, you know, so it depends on... Uh, because if it's a product uh, with hotels and restaurants, there is a little difference in terms of quality of service, ratings. But when you're buying... So I think, therefore, there is... Uh, uh, he's right. Uh, the millennials, and uh, not millennials, but everyone, has multiple apps uh, for different categories which provide the same service. It's You're actually always looking for choice and... and Perhaps, yeah, value for money. Yeah, we're actually also using the other way around for selling. So a lot of used items in the hotel, which are for sale, go on OLX. And yeah, the purchase managers get a better deal of selling them off rather than giving to the local guy who gives us a very scrap item. So we've sold, like we recently changed some Fosters in the hotel. Got a very it's fancy price. Right. So OLX kind of helps that way too.